Mobile phones, more dangerous than smoking. Mobile phones could kill far more people than smoking or asbestos, a study by an award-winning cancer expert has concluded. Could that really be? If it was that bad, wouldn't we be warned by the WHO? We have an announcement finally on whether cell phones cause cancer. It's something that could affect all of us and our children. Scientists from the World Health Organization have been reviewing studies for the last week or so. I want to bring in our senior medical correspondent, Elizabeth Cohen, uh, who joins us live with the findings. Essentially, what did they find? The World Health Organization says that the radiation from mobile devices like cell phones is a possible carcinogen to humans. Now the World Health Organization says radiation coming from those phones could possibly cause cancer, listing cell phone use in the same category as lead, engine exhaust and chloroform. And there is a growing chorus of concern among experts. The European Environmental Agency has pushed for more studies, saying cell phones could be as big a public health risk as asbestos and smoking. All right, Elizabeth, thank you so much. It's something a lot of people have been asking mm -hmm. and wondering, and uh, clearly we have something that is rather conclusive from a very mm -hmm. prestigious uh, organization. That's it right. is a big deal. It is. Oh, so the World Health Organization do warn us. But how bad can it really be? In recent studies that suggest a risk, the tumours tend to occur on the same side of the head where the patient typically holds the phone. The American Journal of Epidemiology published data from Israel finding a 58% higher risk of parotid gland tumours among heavy cell phone users. A Swedish analysis of 16 studies in the journal Occupational and Environmental Medicine showed a doubling of risk for acoustic neuroma and glioma after 10 years of heavy cell phone use. If you've ever put a cell phone to your ear, you should listen to what neurosurgeon Dr. Keith Black has to say. There's no way to say that cell phone use is safe. I, I think that the public has a right to know that there could be a potential risk. The public generally assumes that if one is selling something on the market that we have uh, had assurances that that device is safe. Turns out participants in the study who used a cell phone for 10 years or more had doubled the rate of brain glioma, a type of tumor. Dr. Keith Black has been talking about this longer than many, but the voices joining him are becoming louder and more prominent. The head of a prominent cancer research institute sent a memo to all employees urging them to limit cell phone use because of possible risk of cancer. And the European Environmental Agency has pushed for more studies, saying cell phones could be as big a public health risk as smoking, asbestos, and leaded gasoline. Well, not everyone gets cancer. I know someone who smoked his whole life and still lived to be 90 plus. But I guess health and longevity is a matter of lifestyle in total, not just one factor alone. So is mobile phone radiation really one of the big negative lifestyle factors for all of us? Mobile phones may trigger Alzheimer's. Radio waves from mobile phones do harm body cells and damage DNA, a laboratory study has shown. Carrying a mobile phone could significantly affect a man's fertility. Heavy mobile use damages sperm. Mobiles link to disturbed sleep. And here's something else that might surprise you. The cell manufacturers themselves actually advise against putting the cell phone right next to your head or really anywhere in your body. What is it that the industry knows about cell phones that you say they're not telling us? Well, they know that cell phones are two-way microwave radios and that you should never hold them close to the brain or body, and that's what the fine print warnings tell us. They also know that these radio frequency signals from cell phones can damage DNA, and in animal studies show damage to the brain, liver, eyes, and skin. In children, their skull is thinner, their scalp is thinner, so the microwave radiation can penetrate deeper into the brain of children and young adults and their cells are dividing at a much faster rate, so the impact of the microwave radiation can be much larger. But there have been no studies on children in cell phone safety. I guess it would be too unethical to expose children with mobile phone radiation in a study. But apparently there are several hundred studies on adults proving that mobile phone radiation gives a measurable impact. The scientists we see on the screen have gathered many of these studies in the Bioinitiative report. This whole content can be downloaded on bioinitiative.org.
Some of these studies are also published in big journals like this study. Disturbance of the immune system by electromagnetic fields, a potentially underlying cause for cellular damage and tissue repair reduction which could lead to disease and impairment. This publication has references to 94 other studies. Well, it's clear to me now that mobile phone radiation do affect us, but how can it? The radiation is not really that strong. Cell phone radiation is weak, so it doesn't work with the power. It works because of the erratic nature of the signal. And studies conducted in Europe by, in 12 uh, different laboratories have shown that the weaker signal from today's modern phones can actually be more damaging than the signals from the earlier phones because the pulse digital signal disrupts the membranes, weakens the blood-brain barrier, and that's why it can damage DNA. We know enough now to take simple precautions, and we don't need to stop using phones. We just need to be smarter about how we do right, which is which is why I think that, uh, you know, this can go the wrong way for the cell phone industry or the right way. Uh, if they know something, tell us, and we can change it. Unlike smoking, we use, as you've said, we can figure out ways to use cell phones more uh, effectively. So there is a need to do something, and hopefully there are other solutions than turning off the phone. There is something called Safer Wave, which is said to be the best solution. But before looking into solutions, I want an explanation to how mobile phone radiation can affect us. Mobile phone radiation is not ionizing, and as long as the field strength is not too high, one might think that it should not have any biological impact. If the radiation only were the carrier wave, like the GSM frequencies of 900, 1800 or 1900 megahertz, and the sound frequencies of the speech itself, then that would probably also be the case at least when using a phone with low SIR value for both head and body. But due to the technical aspects of how mobile phones communicate, there are several noise signals generated. Like a TV with still images put together rapidly to look like constant movement, the mobile phones are also communicating with many short digital pulses. Every time an electromagnetic pulse is generated, a high frequency transient appears. In addition, the carrier wave has harmonics, or overtones, in every second octave, mostly due to the nature of the waveform. It is these noise signals that give a measurable impact on human organisms. There are many electromagnetic aspects of our physical body. Some are strong electromagnetic fields, which medical doctors measure with ECG, EMG and EEG. But there are also subtle, yet profound, electromagnetic aspects. Every cell in your body has molecules with electrons moving at certain frequencies. The inherent self-regulated mechanisms are constantly sending signals to activate processes in order to maintain homeostasis. The electrically charged cell membranes are vibrating, creating a direct cell communication. Those are just some of the many aspects that are affected by mobile phone radiation. Let me demonstrate with this radio and FM sender. We are now listening to a radio station by tuning into the FM frequency it transmits the sound waves on. When I turn this little FM sender to the same frequency as a radio, it creates an interference. When I adjust it slightly out of the frequency range again, the interference stops. The field strength of the FM sender is low and even very subtle fields can create interference when the frequencies match. The noise signals in mobile phone radiation is also very subtle, but still creates a measurable effect on the human organism. This creates negative effects proven to increase the risk of many health problems after long-term exposure. The solution to the problem is to deal with these noise signals that affect our health and keep the radiation needed for the mobile phone to communicate. Thank you. That was quite enlightening. So who managed to come up with a solution to the problem? Who is behind SaferWave? SaferWave Limited is a UK-based company founded by scientists from Russia, Norway and the UK. Each of us has 10 to 20 years specialisation in electromagnetic radiation effects on human organisms. Safer wave technology is totally unique and is in the finalizing process for multiple patents. By comparing measurable cellular impact from mobile phone radiation 
our technology is the only effective protective solution on the market. I'm proud of being involved with a practical and effective solution to one of the biggest health risks in modern history. Oh, sounds impressive. So what is the actual SaferWave product for mobile phones? SaferWave for phone is a complete and effective solution for mobile phone radiation. The package includes a unique phone unit which reduced the measurable cell influence by 98%. The 98% effect is in GSM mode, but the Safer Wave phone unit is also effective for other bands. Safer Wave for phone also includes a headset unit. This is a ferrite bead specifically made for filtering the mobile phone radiation, and it installs on a hands-free cable to stop the antenna effect leading radiation to the head. Studies have shown in some situations, a headset can lead even more radiation to the head if it is used without this filter. The phone unit installs inside the battery compartment on all phones that has a detachable battery. But on other phones like iPhone, it can be installed on the outside with a protective sticker on top. The headset unit easily installs on the cable of any cabled headset. Both safer wave units can later be moved to a new phone and it is all included together with a booklet in the Safer Wave for Phone package. OK, I can easily understand the headset unit because I have the same type of EMF filter on my screen cables to eliminate interference on my computer screen. But what changes can the little unit that goes inside the phone make to the radiation? The Safer Wave phone unit is a passive resonance matrix which reflects the radiation signals it is exposed to, but with some changes. Due to the law in physics where two similar electromagnetic fields synchronise to one field, the original mobile phone radiation is then altered. The carrier wave and sound frequencies required for the phone's function cannot be altered this way, but the weak noise signals are reduced. The transients that interfere with our cell communication are almost eliminated, and so are also the sharp peaks of the waveform and the harmonics in other octaves. It's a subtle change to subtle aspects of the radiation, but those are the aspects responsible for the easily measurable impact on the human organism. Well, not everything is as easy to understand, but I see on the saferwave.com website that they have a scientific advisory board with people who should understand these principles better than most. Here are professors and doctors and experts in all the fields of expertise involved in fully understanding the principles. Two of them we've just been introduced to. Let's also hear if the physics and telecom expert can approve the theories behind SaferWave. When I first got familiar with the development of the SaferWave technology, I was really enthusiastic about it. I have for more than a decade focused on the problematic aspects of mobile phone radiation. The SaferWave eliminates the harmful frequencies in a mobile signal the phone unit has geometrical nanopatterns, which creates frequency inversion of the transients, and also an in-phase softening of the carrier wave. This reduces the transients in frequency and amplitude, the waveform becomes less disturbing, and the harmonics in other octaves are reduced. This is probably the only way to solve the problem of negative biological effects from your mobile phone, without changing the way of using it. When also using the included headset unit, which filters out the radiation through a cable headset, you are fully protected. As a master in physics, with substantial experience from the telecom industry, I can approve the functionality of SaferWay. But can the effects also be proven with measurements? The technologies that can measure the negative influence from mobile phone radiation can also measure the reduction of such influence on the body when SaferWave is used. With the complete SaferWave package, there's no measurable impact as long as the phone is not kept too close to the body. But even with just the phone unit, one can easily measure the effect. In this example, seven people are tested with a medical device, measuring cellular activity in their weakest organ. The first grey poles are the reference measurements taken when no mobile phones have been used for an hour. The blue pole is directly after 10 minutes talking on a mobile phone with the beta version of SaferWave phone unit in the battery compartment. The red pole 
is directly after 10 minutes talking on the same mobile phone without any protection. And you can clearly see that those are the measurements that really differ from the reference. This is just an example of how to test the effects. After testing with multiple technologies in multiple facilities over several years in the beta testing period, the effectiveness has been calculated to 98% reduction of measurable cellular impact. OK, it does seem to work. So we need the Safer Wave phone unit to take care of the harmful noise signals in mobile phone radiation. And for children, and also when we want to be 100% safe, we will keep the phone on a distance and also use the headset unit that filters out the radiation through a cabled headset. It's all in the Safer Wave package. Though it's not expensive, it's not free. Are safety precautions worth prioritising? Are you thinking the same as I do? Preventing health problems today is smarter than struggling with them tomorrow. After watching this movie, I hope that you too understand the importance of the breakthrough technology from SaferWave. Act now and make a good decision for you and your loved ones.